Optimal objectivity, detection of the prevalence of beta electromage producing E. coli and Klebsiella pneumonia in UTI patient. A specific objectivity to isolate identify gram negative bacilli from UTI patient to perform antibiotic susceptibility test to phenotypic confirmation of ESBL, MBL, and KPC producing E. coli and Klebsiella species by combined DIX method and modify hot tests respectively to, de to detect KPC gene by PCR. This is the this is the flow chart of my method uh, material and method in this uh, specimen collection and urine sample was included in cleared agar then after gram estin colony characteristic and biochemical test was performed and Then after antibiotic susceptibility testing and screening of ESBL producer and carbapenem E. coli and Klebsiella was identified. Then after phenotypic confirmation of ESBL, MBL and Klebsiella and pneumonia carbapenem positive E. coli and E. coli and Klebsiella by combined risk method and modified heart test respectively. Then after DNA testing and perform PCR for the gene of the beta electromage of E. coli and Klebsiella pneumonia. This is the result of my, this picture shows uh, uh, colony of E. coli and uh, Klebsiella pneumonia in clay dagger. Second picture shows the microscopic view of uh, these two bacteria. And third picture shows the biochemical test of these two bacteria. This is the uh, phenotypic uh, confirmation of ESP producing bacteria. Uh, it's, uh, more than or more than or equal to 5 mm than zone diameter of septa DG in the indicate this uh, bacteria is uh, ESBL producer bacteria. This is the phenotypic confirmation of MBL producer bacteria in this uh, test. Um, Emipenems and imipenums with EDT is read here. And um, zone of more than five or.
This is the phenotypic conf uh, confirmation of ESP detecting bacteria in this uh, test uh, cephalis, group of cephalospring antibiotic like ceftazidime and ceftazidine with clavinic acid is uh, used here. Uh, and, uh, more than or equal to 5 mm than zone diameter of ceftazidine indicate the this bacteria is uh, ESBL producer bacteria. And this is the MBL detection. Uh, in this uh, MBL detection method, imipenem or an imipenems with EDTA is uh, used here, and this is the uh, like uh, ES, ESBL more than um, more than or equal to 5 mm for imipenem plus EDTA DX compared to imipenem. This indicate MBL positive. This is the screening test of modified hot test. In this test, uh, ATCC culture is diluted, diluted in 1 to 10 ratio in normal line. Then after test bacteria were included in, uh, in this, uh, this mullein heater agar. And in negative, uh, in negative uh, isolate, there is, a, uh, there is a clear zone, but in positive, uh, positive isolate, there is a clobic-like indication, which means this bacteria is a produced carbapenem enzyme. This is the antibiotic resistant pattern using uh, Kirby antimicrobial dish diffusion in uh, Mullen Hinteragar. Result during December to June, among 800 of between sample were collected, among 140 were confirmed positive urine culture of E. coli and Klebsiella pneumoniae. Among them, 101 were E. coli and 39 were Klebsiella pneumoniae. Female well, 82.18 percent and uh, 70.82% uh, were male of age group 5 months to 81 years, among them uh, 5 were children. Uh, of total 181 E. coli isolate, 49.50% uh, isolate were MDR and 10.92% isolate were XDR. Out of 181 uh, isolate of E. coli, 35 were detected ESPL producer and 66 of them were non ESPL producer. Out of 181 E. coli, 9 were carbapenem resistance, in which 5, five were MBL po test positive and 1 was modified test positive. Of total 39 Klebsiella pneumonia isolate, 15 isolate were MDR and 20 isolate were XDR. Among 39 Klebsiella pneumonia, 8 were ESPF producer, 60 were carbapenem resistance, and 10 were modified hot test positive for Klebsiella pneumonia. Conclusion, the result of our study show high prevalence of ESBL and KPC, but low prevalence of EMBL in culture bacteria from urine sample of UTI patient. High percentage of MDR was observed in E. coli. High percentage of XDR was observed in Klebsiella pneumonia. Klebsiella pneumonia isolate from urine uh, produ uh, producing beta lactamase were resistant to wide range of antibiotics. Nitrate frentone is the less resistant in E. coli. Nofloxacin and uh, uh, caught is the red resistance in Klebsiella pneumonia. Future work genetic pattern of mutation. Phenotypically, screen resistant bacteria need to be tested for KPC gene. Genomic and plasmid DNA was isolated. PCR based identification met method will be employed. Uh, I would like to acknowledge my, t uh, my teacher, Nast College, and my uh, uh, my uh, uh, Nepal Police Hospital, uh, staff of Nepal Police Hospital, and my husband Rajesha for their support. This is a reference. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sangita, for a nice presentation. In spite of the very hard situation, she did her very good job. Thank you. And I would like to welcome uh, another presentation, Gopi Ram Sangtan, Sulav. I hope you will also finish all the presentation within the time framework, seven minutes. Good morning and namaste. <coughs> Respected co chairman and academician, senior scientist, young scientist. Uh, today I'm here to share the, our small work during the COVID 19 pandemics. Uh, robotics and artificial intelligence 
has become a significant role in healthcare setting for management of spread of infectious disease and other infectious, highly infectious disease. Apart from the virus, if there, there are a lot of pathogenic bacteria and fungi are present in hospital environment, which cause the hospital acquired infection and raise the requirement of intensive care and increase the comorbidity and co uh, modality rate with the SARS-CoV-2. The wide variation of uh, secondary bacterial co-infection was found in critically COVID-19 patients and the re recent literature reported the <coughs> ranging from 12, around the 12 percent up to 70 percent uh, secondary bacterial co-infection with the SARS-CoV-2 infected patient. Most of <coughs> common infectious agents are Priority pathogens like Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Pseudomonas aerogenesa, Acinetobacter baumannii in gram-negative bacteria, and Staphylococcus aureus and Haemophilus influenza in gram-positive bacteria. Uh, this work is actually started from uh, prevention is better than cure. We uh, thought and we decided to develop the, some new tools uh, during the COVID pandemic uh, for battle to this situation uh, within the using the locally available material and resources uh, and with minimum expenses because uh, this time is the lockdown situation. There is the no available advanced material and resources which assist these tools are uh, assist the, uh, to save the money and uh, time and also reduce the health risks, inf health risks to infection in healthcare worker, frontline healthcare worker, as well as the health cleaning staff. The objective of this work was to develop the spraying robot for human contactless dis disinfection at the hospital and quarantine setting. Uh, here is the methodology. Uh, there is the two types of methodology. One is the uh, assemble of robotics and develop the application, and one other one is the microbial assay. Uh, here is the um, block diagram of electronic component of Robotics, I'm not going to detail in this. Uh, here is the application for controlling the, this spraying robot. It, uh, it is the user friendly. <coughs> we developed the two different uh, prototypes of robotics. First one is here. And second one is here. After the some <coughs> getting valuable and remarkable suggestion from the hospital management and other expertise, we modified the version 2 robotics. Uh, here is the one demonstration of robot. Sorry, uh, there is, I insert the one video. Unfortunately, this cannot play. <coughs> uh, this is the microbial assay methodological part. We collect the four different sites of, uh, four different site sampling sites, uh, hospital, Patient, patient bed, door, handle, floor, and different medical instrument. After the collection, after the collection, uh, we transport the sample in Central Department of Microbiology for microbial assay, enumeration, identification of <coughs> bacteria within the biosafety laboratory too. And after the getting the result, we compare the which one is the best method for applying this application. Here is the uh, result uh, of microbial experiment. Uh, this <coughs> figure shows that the robotic application is effective against the uh, disinfection in hospital setting up to uh, three times a reduction of um, microbial load. This slide shows the after the disinfection uh, only after disinfection uh, only 25 percent of uh, bacterial count is uh, inhibited by the manual method with the compare the robotics has 58.3 percent inhibit the bacterial load <coughs> by the robotics in conclusion the spring robot for disinfection in hospital environment is feasible the disinfection using the human contactless robot, robotics automation is more uh, 
promising mode of disinfection than the manual disinfection, reduce the risk of infection and cost of traditional cleaning and cleaning and the disinfection. We need to further modification of robot uh, could improve user friendly application for getting the quality of result and precise result. I would like to acknowledge our uh, microbiological team and robotics team. I also, I would like to Central Department of Microbiology, Pulchok Engineering Campus, KIST Medical College and Teaching Hospital, National Ayurved Research Center, and lastly, NAST, which provided the grant. Here is the some pictures in the working, and these are the references. That's the thing. Uh, thank you, Sulav Gopiram Sangtan, for the nice presentation. Thank you so much. And I would like to welcome another presentation, uh, presenter Sajala Kafle. And thank you all for very short and sweet presentation. It's really nice. Okay, Sajala. Good afternoon. The topic of my presentation is Pharmacist Awareness and Attitude Towards Counterfeit Medicines in the Kathmandu Valley. I am Dr. Sazala Kafli from the Department of Pharmacology at KIST Medical College and Teaching Hospital. Counterfeit medicines are the drugs that contain incorrect amount of active pharmaceutical ingredient, wrong active pharmaceutical ingredient, or repacking of date expired products in medicines. They also include those drugs that are inappropriately formulated and are manufactured in substandard conditions. Various studies conducted all over the world have highlighted the issues of counterfeit medicines. The problem of counterfeit medicine is a serious issue as medicines are difficult to afford and hard to access was reported in a study conducted in Yemen. Almost 76% of the pharmacists were aware of the problem of counterfeit medicines in a study conducted in Jordan. In another study conducted in California, United States, among the 155 respondents, two-thirds of them mentioned that counterfeit drugs have caused a major problem in their profession. Also, in a study conducted in Nepal, it was revealed that 32.5% of the medicines present in Nepal may be substandard. In a developing country like Nepal, community pharmacists are the most accessible healthcare providers. Kathmandu is the capital of Nepal with a huge population, hence the current study was conducted in Kathmandu Valley to evaluate the pharmacist awareness and attitude on the counterfeit drugs. The objective of the study was to assess the awareness and perception regarding counterfeit medicines among the community pharmacists of Kathmandu Valley. Methodology, ethical approval was obtained from Nepal Health Research Council. All the community pharmacists registered with DDA and who gave consent for participation were included in the study. A cross-sectional study was conducted in the Kathmandu Valley Convenience sampling was performed, and a sample size of 348 was calculated. Uh, the data was collected by using structured and validated questionnaire, and the data was analyzed by using descriptive statistics. Regarding the results, among the 348 community pharmacists who participated in our study, 65.2% of them were male, and 35.8% were female. 73.3% of the community pharmacists were between the age of 31 to 40 years. 
72.4% of the pharmacies were located in the Kathmandu Valley, followed by 16.7% in the Lalitpur district and 10.9% from Bhaktapur district of Kathmandu Valley. Among the 348 participants, 69.2% had done diploma in pharmacy and 58.7% had working experience of more than five years. 99.7% of the community pharmacists had obtained their education in Nepal. 97.7% of the community pharmacists mentioned that they did not know any community pharmacists who were dispensing counterfeit products and only 2.3% of the community pharmacists, they mentioned that they were aware of the pharmacists who were dispensing counterfeit medicines. 96.8% of the community pharmacists mentioned that actions should be taken against the community pharmacists who were dispensing counterfeit medicines. Most of the community pharmacists, they strongly agreed to the statement that the pharmacists who dispensed counterfeit drugs are unprofessional. Also, most of the community pharmacists strongly agreed to the statement that the pharmacists who dispensed counterfeit drugs are unethical. In addition to this, most of the community pharmacists strongly agreed to the statement that the pharmacists, they decide to stock counterfeit medicines in their pharmacy for big profit. 51.4% of the community pharmacists, they dis strongly disagreed to the statement that the pharmacists, they decide to stock counterfeit medicines in their pharmacy since the quality of those medicines are acceptable. Almost all of the community pharmacists, 99.7%, mentioned that the law against the counterfeit medicines should be strengthened. Almost 50% of the community pharmacists mentioned that they were never offered any counterfeit medicines. 98.8% of the community pharmacists, they mentioned that they daily check the integrity of the drug suppliers and the wholesalers. Vitamins and supplements were considered as high risk for counterfeiting by the community pharmacist, which was followed by non-registered drugs that are more likely to be counterfeited. 99.7% of the community pharmacists, they mentioned that other than medicines, they were willing to buy any other counterfeit products if they are given good price and good quality. In conclusion, our study showed that the pharmacists of Kathmandu Valley are aware of counterfeit drugs. The participants are also aware of the harmful effects of counterfeit drugs. Most of the community pharmacists mentioned that actions should be taken against the community pharmacists involved in dispensing counterfeit medicines. We would like to acknowledge NAST for providing us with grant to perform this study. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sazala, ma'am, for the very nice presentation. And I would like to welcome Tejana Manada, sir, for your presentation. Namaste and good afternoon to all. Uh, I am Dr. Tejendra Manandar, working in KIST Medical College and Teaching Hospital, Lalitpur as lecturer. The topic for my presentation is knowledge, attitude, and practice of pharmacovigilance among undergraduate medical and dental students of a 
tertiary care teaching hospital. So moving on to the background, it is a well evident fact that under reporting of suspe suspected adverse drug reaction, uh, simply ADRs uh, by healthcare professional, uh, professionals is a, a widespread problem in Nepal. To improve the uh, ADR reporting, uh, we should improve the knowledge, practice, and attitude of healthcare professionals towards the uh, ADR reporting and pharmacovigilance. To strengthen the pharmacovigilance program, medical students should be well trained from the very beginning, uh, from the very first day they uh, step in the medical college, they should be trained about pharmacovigilance and ADR monitoring. The uh, well trained students then will be well equipped for the ADR, monitor, ADR reporting and thereby uh, there will be proper functioning of the pharmacovigilance program. The primary objective of uh, the study is to assess knowledge, attitude, and practice of pharmacovigilance among undergraduate medical and dental students in a tertiary care uh, teaching hospital. So this is basically a cross-sectional study, and before uh, the study is conducted, ethical approval is uh, obtained from Institutional Review Committee of KISS Medical College and Teaching Hospital. Uh, the study population uh, was first and second year uh, MBBS and BDS students. So the, uh, the time period was from first to second week of March 2021. As this was the time just after the second lockdown, the student were uh, having the provision of uh, online learning. So it was difficult or, or nearly impossible to get uh, direct response from them. So a uh, online questionnaire was prepared using, uh, uh, using a Google form and it was distributed to the st students via their email and social ne uh, networking accounts. The response were then uh, recorded and the, uh, and the data was generated. As the data was not in normal distribution, the comparison among different subgroups were done by using Man Whitney U test. So out of 238 students who were contacted, only 204 gave the response. Out of uh, 204, 109 students were male, that is 53.4% were male, and 95 students were female, that is 46.6%. Among the uh, 204 uh, students, 150, uh, 57 students were from MBBS, out of which 87 were from MBBS first year and 70 were from MBBS second year. Similarly, 47 students were from uh, BDS, out of which 16 were from first year and 31 were from second year. So in knowledge-based questions, uh, the students were quite aware of the term pharmacovigilance, uh, their de its definition and definition of adverse drug reaction, but very but only few uh, knew about the International Center for Drug Safety Monitoring uh, Monitoring's location, as well as National Pharmacovigilance Center's location in Nepal. Uh, they only few, only four of them uh, knew the term Naranjo probability scale, and uh, only 22 of them knew that there was a pharmacovigilance center in the college. In attitude-based question, most of the students were ha having the positive attitude. Uh, they thought that ADR reporting is necessary. They could play a role in ADR reporting. The, they, uh, they have to have the uh, pharmacovigilance course in their first and second years, and it should be taught in detail for the health care professionals. And they thought that ADR monitoring centers should be mandatory in each hospital, which would benefit the patients and doctors to decrease the morbidity and mortality. In practice-based questions, uh, they, uh, most of them uh, were, uh, most of them come across with patients experiencing adverse drug reactions, but only 15 of them have seen the uh, ADR reporting form and only 29 of them know where to report the ADR. 
only six of the uh, students have visited, had visited ADR monitoring center and very few knew about how to report ADR. So they were not confident on uh, reporting the ADR uh, if they uh, face them in their future. So results, maximum possible score for knowledge is nine and for attitude eight and for practice it is, uh, it was seven. Thus the uh, maximum po uh, possible total score was 24. Uh, with this uh, scoring system, the mean was calculated and the mean for knowledge was uh, 4.2 with standard deviation 1.4. For attitude, it was 71.1 and for practice, it was 1.8. And the total mean for uh, knowledge, attitude and practice was 13.11 with standard deviation of 2.41. So where we can see the table where total median score for knowledge, attitude and practice with interquartile range uh, is given. Uh, so median for total knowledge score is four and for attitude seven and pr uh, practice two. So this interprets that uh, there was positive or good attitude uh, for, for for my co vigilance among the students, while the uh, knowledge and practice were poor. When we compare the uh, scores, median scores for MBBS and BDS, uh, significant difference has been uh, seen in the uh, in the practice scores, but there was no significant difference. That is, p-value is less than uh, 0.5. Uh, 0.05 in case of knowledge practice scores, thus the total scores was, was not also significant. So by this we can conclude that uh, students have positive attitude towards pharmacovigilance, but they lack proper knowledge and practice, which indicates the need of integrating pharmacovigilance education in undergraduate uh, medical curricula for the practice in their future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tejinder, for a very nice presentation. And I would like to welcome our next, and I think it's the last presenter, uh, Dr. Narendra Kumar Singh. In the meantime, I would like to announce another thing that our technical session two is shifted to next hall, uh, NAST Auditorium Hall. And regarding the plan in plenary session, it will start uh, according to the program schedule, it will start from the 1.30, but it depends upon the session chair of this session, uh, Professor Dr. Bulan Thapa, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Narendra Kumar Singh, uh, working as a lecturer in Department of Chemistry, Omrit Campus. Uh, today, I am going to present uh, some of my research work uh, have been done in uh, PhD research, and the research topic uh, and the topic of the presentation is enhancement in anti-cancer activity of N4 dimethyl 5 haloisatin thai on coordination with copper second in vitro study. Uh, this is a graphical abstract uh, of my research work. Uh, in, the, in the figure present in left side, uh, this is the structure of thai which is complete organic molecule, uh, that is ligand, and in right side, uh, both thai and their copper second complexes uh, are showing the anti-cancer behavior where the copper second complexes have prominent behavior than the thiosemic carbazones. Uh, now, this is the presentation outline. Uh, in this case, we'll discuss about introduction, literature review, methods and methodology uh, for the formation of thiosemic carbazone and their copper second complexes, result discussion, characterization by various spectroscopical techniques, uh, similarly, anti-cancer screening uh, against breast cancer, skin cancer, and normal prostate cancer cell line. Conclusion recommendation. 
Uh, now, uh, uh, this is the objectives uh, of my research work. In this uh, section, uh, we have synthesized uh, four thiosomic carbazone that are ligands and four copper second complexes, and all the compounds uh, have been characterized by spectroscopical techniques, uh, and as well as uh, all the compounds have been tested uh, against uh, various cancer cell lines. Now, this is the introduction part. Uh, here, isatin is the parent uh, carbonyl compound, which I have been used uh, to prepare the thiosomy carbazone and their copper second complexes. It, it is synthetic uh, as well as uh, natural alkaloid also, and it can be also uh, obtained from the cannon ball, ball tree. Uh, isatin, that is the parent molecule, has the various pharmacological properties, uh, most, uh, mainly anti-cancer, antimicrobial, and antiviral. Uh, likewise, it also shows uh, antiseptic, uh, anti-helminthic, antioxidant, etc. Uh, this is the st uh, structure of isatin, where A, B, C, D are showing, the, uh, showing their uh, importance during the formation of other compounds in all the sites all the compounds have the kinase inhibition character uh, which is used uh, used in the cell division now these are the isatin based uh, oral drugs which have been approved by the uh, fda uh, and these are the uh, these are all uh, these compounds have been used in cervical head neck cancer colorectal cancer etc and these are the structures of these oral drugs uh, according to the Globocon data, uh, in 2020, uh, total ca cancer cases, uh, total cancer cases was found in 19.3 million, uh, but it is expected in 2035, uh, 24 million. Similarly, in the case of Nepal, uh, the anti-cancer, uh, uh, the cancer cases were, were can can cancer cases was found in 2020 in Nepal. That is 20,500. And in developing countries, uh, it is increasing 1.5 million per year. Uh, according to Globocon data, uh, the males, mainly the uh, cancer case found in male is lung, uh, followed by prostate, colorectal, liver. Similarly, in female, uh, main cancer case is breast, followed by colorectal, lung, cervical cancer. But in Nepal, main cancer case is cervix, uteri, followed by breast, stomach, and colorectal. Uh, this is the literature review part where the thiosomic carbazone uh, have been uh, found as an anti-cancer drug through the uh, different mechanism that is ribonucleotide reductase inhibition, uh, metal dependent radical damage, DNA uh, binding, uh, similarly protein synthesis inhibition. Uh, coordination of thiosomic carbazone to copper second complexes uh, have significant uh, influence on the anti-cancer activity and it also shows the anti-cancer property by DNA cleavage through hydrolytic pathway, oxidative pathway, P53 protein activation, and ROSL production. Uh, this is the structure of methisazone, uh, which have been used, which has been used as the uh, uh, used as the drug to eradicate the smallpox since 1965. And these are the structure of copper second complexes of thiosomy carbazones and the, uh, these complexes have been found in mononuclear as well as dinuclear form. And in these cases, dinuclear form has slightly more character than the mononuclear form. Uh, now, this is the bar diagram of the uh, different cancer cell lines uh, where, the, where the isatin based drugs have been used. And mainly, isatin based drug uh, is used in breast cancer, uh, like, uh, followed by lung, leukemia, colon, etc. Now, this is the method and methodology section. Uh, it is classified and categorized into three types. That is scheme one for the preparation of N4 substituted thiosomic carbazite, and second one is the formation of thiosomic carbazones, and third one is the formation of copper second uh, complexes. Now, now, this is the result and characterization uh, section. Uh, in this case, CHN analysis um, of the all the compounds are in agreement with their theoretical value and mainly I am focusing on two compounds that is the compound second and uh, compound six where also we can find that the both the values are same uh, this is the IR data of the compound second where we can see that the 
C double bond N and C double bond O. C double bond S have the prominent peaks and it is showing the formation of this thiosomy carbazone. Uh, this is also the uh, structure of the copper second complexes where we can see that the C double bond N, uh, C double bond N peak uh, is showing toward the lower, uh, lower uh, wavelength due to their formation, uh, due to their coordination to copper ion. And this is the NMR, NMR spectra of the thiosomy carbazone where we can, uh, we can uh, found the total number of hydrogen and the number of uh, peaks are same. This is the CNMR. Similarly, this is the mass spectra of the ligand and the copper second complexes where theoretical and calculated values are same. This is the UV spectra of the compound two and six uh, where we can found where you can find the uh, both are showing the electron transition. And this is the PXRD, PXRD pattern of the copper second complexes, which is showing the distorted square planar geometry of the copper second complexes. Uh, this is EPR spectra of the copper second complex. Uh, it is showing the mononuclear form and distorted square planar geometry. And this is the TGA data, TGA data of the compound. It is showing the stability of the molecule uh, at room temperature. Now this is the anti-cancer screening section uh, where we have uh, tested all the all these compounds in South Asian University. Uh, and this is the protocol for its test. Uh, this diagram, uh, bar diagram is showing all the compounds are showing significant anti-proliferative activity. Uh, but metallation of ligand to copper ion significantly increases their anti-cancer test. Uh, this is also the data of these compounds. Uh, similarly, compa in among all these uh, eight compounds, compound six and se uh, seven are showing the significant characters. That's why they have been also tested in colony formation assay and uh, PI staining also. Uh, now, the conclusion, uh, all the compounds, copper second complexes and their thiosomy carbazones have been synthesized and all the copper second complexes uh, showed the distorted square planar geometry. Copper second complexes have uh, higher anti-cancer activity than the uh, thiosomy carbazone. Compound 5 and 6 are, uh, have been found uh, as the prominent anti-cancer drugs. So it needs uh, more tests uh, toward the, its mechanism. And we can increase the, the anti-cancer activity of thiosomy carbazone uh, by formation of binuclear complexes and modifying the NH position. The, uh, now, finally, I would acknowledge uh, all the persons who helped in research work. These are the references. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Narendra Kumar Singh, sir, for your nice presentation. Yes. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, everyone, all the presentation, very nice presentation, very short and sweet. It's really nice to uh, have you all in this forum and uh, our technical session session two will be shifted to next hall medical uh, nast auditorium hall because of our technical issues to manage our valedictory session because time is very limited and uh, uh, thank you everyone here uh, in this session all together 11 papers one is thematic another is invited and nine uh, paper is oral presentation. Among them, five presenters, uh, presenters are the, uh, our uh, male pa pa participants and the four is the women participants. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dista Ma'am, for co-chairing this session. I would like to request Dr. Zekant Rao, sir, to present token of love to our session co-chair. We will take a lunch break of 30 minutes and we will start our next plenary session at 2 p.m.
Thank you. <laughs>